Hello and welcome to another episode of an unexpected podcast. My name is Tim and with me as always we have Matt, Devin, and Evan. Uh, on this week's episode we're going to go over a list by Matthew Shorthouse and we're going to be doing a deeper dive into the defense of the north as well just talking about little tidbits we had learned from the book. Um, we're going to go over to the list right now though shortly and he has the new attack on the Lothlorien Legion for his list so we thought that would be appropriate to do for the list review. So his leader is Musger. He has six orcs with a pick and shield, five, four orcs with spear, two orcs with spear and shield, and three war riders with shield and throwing spear. The other, next war brand is Druzak with two giant spiders who have the free venom back, uh, one bat swarm, four goblins with bow, four goblins with shield, four goblins with spear, uh, Ashrak with four giant spiders, one bat swarm, Four goblins with bow, three goblins with shield, three goblins with spear, a goblin shaman with eight goblins with bow, and a wild work chieftain with one wild work. So he has 59 models, six might, and 16 bows. Um, my initial first thoughts is obviously it's very cool to see a list already kind of pre-made, so it's kind of like something to go based off of. For me, I haven't made a list for this yet. Um, very caster heavy, which you would expect, of course, because... You know, they have all those great spells that go with each one of them. Um, the Wild War Chieftain, I actually really like. It uh, gives a little bit of hitting power in there. Uh, and then the, I always, I'm always, i always a big fan of Wild Wargs. I think they're really cost-effective for what they do. Um, obviously, you got the Goblins, and with the new Legendary Legion, they are Cave Dwellers, so they have the longest range, uh, 18 inches, and they get the plus one to wound, so he has 16 bows, but... Um, I don't believe they're maxed out, but still 16 bows at 18 inch range in this legion should do a lot of damage. Obviously, the one concern for me is the six might uh, and the lack of killing power from heroes specifically, but the Wild War Chieftain is kind of there to do that, I would assume. Um, but you also have Bat Swarm, so it's not as big of a deal. Um, yeah, I, it's 59 models is always good. If Rainier was here, he would. Definitely be a fan. He's always a fan of spamming out stuff. Um, I like the two bath swarms instead of one. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty good list, but um, I'll bring it over to you guys. What are your thoughts? Is he ever, he, he almost has like no money. I mean, Druzhag almost. Does, does, Mus, does Musgar have one or two? Musgar, Musgar, has, Musgar has two. Ashrak has one. Druzhag has Druzhag two. Has two. Yeah, Druzhag and Wild Shaman has one. Has, and the Wild War Chieftain has two. Yeah, I assume he didn't count the Wild Warg Chieftain because his heroics only affect Wild Wargs, I right. would assume. Right. Um, yeah. Although, you know, they, they affect him. Um, I have to imagine that he's not intending to use, because normally you people use Druzhag and Ashrax might and such to guarantee a spell cast. So that way you can one dice every spell. So really, when I play Druzhag, that two might in my mind is zero. Like there's... There's really no mind. Now, this Legion, which I'm not sure if we should cover all the rules of this Legion again because it's so new, but uh, you get to re-roll a single or any number of D6 when making a casting roll. So is that sufficient to where you would say, all right, I wouldn't uh, use the might for magic. Instead, I would use it for heroic moves and such like that. I want to say yes, based on the casting values, needing most of these things need a three up. What do you guys think of that? Because otherwise, I'm like, he has like, three points of might, in my opinion, maybe. So, yeah, I mean, I was actually toying around with lists from this Legion yesterday, and um, I think his model count is right. I think this is one where you want a mass of guys uh, in the Legion, but you, you have the same issue. You have the same issue with might, but I do think because you're re-rolling all of your casting dice that you know, you, you can and will end up using the might from the leaders in order to do stuff. And, I mean, remember that heroic moves are probably all you're going to be calling from this legion um, because, I mean, it's, it's, not like any, it's not like any of these heroes other than the Wild War Chieftain. Um, actually, does Wild War Chieftain have, uh, have strike? No, he doesn't. So nobody here is going to be calling heroic strikes. Um, just because that's something the Legion doesn't do. It gets its fight value boosts from Druzhag and his Enraged Beast spells. Um, 
so yeah, I think you're going to be using these guys. The I mean, the alternative bill, if you want kind of two extra points of might to kind of do something with, is to buy a 35 point um, goblin captain. And then the question is kind of what do you take out of the list in order to get that? I mean, just some things to think about that this list doesn't have that it could have. One is a banner, um, because unlike most goblin lists, you can buy an orc with a banner and stick him in with Musker. Um, that's not here. Um, I think the list that I did uh, had a banner. You can throw in the captain. You're going to have to take some stuff out to, to put the captain in. And um, yeah, and we can talk about some things that probably, you know, that, that maybe you can take out and use the, the point someplace else to put in. Um, and another is, another is War Marauders. And we can talk a bit about whether they're worth it because they're, they're, yeah, they're useful. And we'll talk about why, but they are pricey. Um, and another is Goblin Prowlers, uh, which are an upgrade from the regular goblins. But they have the, you know, they have, they have the fight three, which is kind of less important in this list. But what they have are the throwing weapons, which are really important in this list because they're plus one, they're, they're plus one to wound throwing weapons in this list because uh, every battle takes place in the dark. Every time um, the, uh, and every time you you hit when you throw stuff in the dark, you get or shoot stuff in the dark, you get plus one to wound. Um, so, all right, I'm, I'm going to stop talking and turn over the floor. But those are some other things that can kind of go into this list, and we can chat a bit. Probably worth chatting a bit at this point because I mean that this is an episode that's a deeper dive into the defense of the north. This is something from the defense of the north. It's probably worth a deeper dive because I think this is probably one of the two or three most most common uh, legendary legions we're going to see coming out of it, so it's worth talking about. Yeah, so before I think we, we dive into that whole, uh, oh, we could take this, oh, we could take this, um, I'm just going to do a bit of uh, sort of cleanup on, I guess, the, the makeup of this list here. Um, first off, I don't know if somebody's mentioned this already, but uh, the max amount of bows that this list can take is 18, and there are 16 bows. Uh, in this particular list, uh, I'd recommending just completely. I would I'd rec recommend completely maxing out the bow limit, because um, that is one of the big things about this list is you're able to outrange and therefore outshoot uh, many armies and get the plus one to wound. Explain um, why for those who may not have remembered from our previous episode on defense. Yeah. Anymore. So uh, with the, the, the dark of night special or whatever it's called, it basically means the range of all weapons are 12 inches and they get plus one to wound. However, uh, goblins ignore those two things because they have the cave dweller special rule. So they can shoot 18 inches while everyone else shoots 12 inches and they do not get plus one to wound against them. But, um, they will get plus one to wound against others. And a quick uh, aside with that, uh, this is not true um, for the orcs and the giant spiders. And that's why I advocate in this list, one, I'd say give all of your orcs shields if you can, because otherwise they're going to dissolve extremely quickly to um, even one turn of shooting. Um, and two, uh, I'd also recommend that all of your orcs have spears and they go behind your goblins because the orcs also don't benefit from the goblin shaman, which means you probably want your auto pass courage uh, models to be in front uh, to be able to charge any terror causing models in that way. Um, the orcs are also slightly more valuable because they provide that fight three. So that's another reason to give them all spears and keep them in the back. I'd also recommend um, changing your spear to shield ratios on the goblins to compensate for this. Um, moving, uh, making some spearmen, shieldmen, and then maybe dropping uh, a, war, a war rider down to a wild warg or something like that to be able to give more of your goblins with bows spears, just to give you a more, um, a more distinct and fluid battle line that isn't 
super uh, compartmentalized um, with the bowmen sitting off and doing their own thing and then just the spearmen and shieldmen fighting. Yeah, I think that's all true. Um, I, I mean, I guess the only thing I'd quibble with that a little bit about is I think if I were to build this, I would not give the orcs uh, shields just because with the 12 inch range for shooting, you can kind of maneuver so that you get your orcs behind the goblins um, before you get into range. And, you know, if you lose a few to shooting, you lose a few to shooting. But, you know, if they're shooting at the if they're shooting at the orcs with the spears behind the goblins, that means they're not shooting at the goblins who actually have the bows. And if you're in a shooting duel, you're probably doing this thing where the goblins are kind of like moving back half to stay outside of 18 inches. Um, so I guess I think that's that's less of an issue. You might want to use the 10 points otherwise. But I, I would definitely give a shield to the guy that has the banner um, if you're going to bring the banner. Um, one other thing I was thinking about, too, is so there's no march in this list, with the exception of actually the Wild War Chieftain who gets march. And one thing you might want to do if if there was if there was one thing I was going to you know, kind of delete to save points here, what I would do is I would change the three warg riders with shield and throwing spear into three wargs and put them in the Wild War Chieftain's Warband. Um, because what that gives you is I mean, you already have some flying stuff. You already have a bunch of giant spiders. So you have stuff that can cover ground quickly. If you have the wild war chieftain with his little war band of three wargs, you have something that actually can not only move quickly, but can march quickly. So you can do something where you have like your main army. You know, if you're playing reconnoiter, for example, if you have your main army kind of going up one side of the board or down the middle or something, you can take that little packet of guys uh and you can just say you know if, if somebody's left a flank undefended you can just call the wild war the call a march with the wild warg it's not going to affect anybody but the wargs so he can call this like even in the middle of a combat just to get the heck out of there and just kind of zoom for the gap with his his wargs and then the wargs can run off the table the next turn so that that's that's a a, a trick that might be worth uh um doing with this um i'm not entirely and i'm also not entirely convinced that the goblins with shield i, I agree that the god you, you shouldn't have any goblins with spear here or at most like one or two i'm not sure i would even put goblins with shield in this i might just replace those guys if i could find some extra points somewhere with either more goblins with bows till i'm up with the up to the limit or prowlers um that's just kind of my thought. Devin, what do you think about this? Oh, Devin, you're muted. Devin has no thoughts about no, this at all. Sorry. <laughs> Can you guys hear me now? Yep. All right. Perfect. Sorry. So there's a, a lot of um, uh, thoughts and taking in on this. Actually, it was even when you were talking about the Wild War Chieftain, uh, you said it has March. It, it only affects wargs, though, which, of course, it, it, into into your analysis. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that that can be a good thing because you can call a march, get the wild war chieftain and his wargs kind of like out of whatever is going on around and off into some place where they yeah. can't be caught. And then still everybody else in the army can still attack, which is fine. There was one consideration I had just because it affects it, too, is to, to have a um, warg marauder. So if you took out the three warg riders with shield and spear you could get a warg marauder and one warg uh which would lower numbers by one but i'd be wondering if like the power of a warg marauder with a wild war chieftain which you know the warg marauder i think is one of the few models that actually has the goblin and warg keyword so therefore it's affected also by Druzhag, if you want to right um so just an interesting little synergy but like i said uh, so Druzhag's power actually doesn't because i looked this up yesterday it doesn't work on any warg that is ridden Ah, okay. Then they, they just covered that loophole. Um, yeah, they did. So then in that case, then I guess you're just getting a Warg Marauder, which, you know, given that it normally I wouldn't say, eh, but since it already has um, two Bowmen on top and you're benefiting from this cover of darkness rule, I kind of would wonder about the benefit of like being able to run around just shooting at like 
key targets from 18 inches because you can move five inches and still fire with these things. And I get it. You can, you can actually move 10 inches and fire with the work. You know, oh, that's right. Work. Yeah. 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 That's right. They do have that. Yeah. So, so you have a really serious like kiting model that just because of the plus one to wound has to still be taken seriously, despite the needing sixes to hit. Um, well, while moving around. Yep. Um, so I don't know, like, I'm just kind of, kind of curious about mess. Once again, I haven't play tested this Legion, so it's hard for me to really give my thoughts from experience, but that's something where I'm like, okay, having a mobile platform to fire from, I just, so that, that was when, when you said the, the wargs, I'm like, well, I think I'd take it a different step and just take these, um, that would give you more bows. Uh, and I think for free, cause they don't count toward the bow limit, do they? Uh, they count as one toward the bow limit, they count as one. which okay, is fine. So then, uh, toward what Evan then was saying. Um, yeah. So that was a thought. And I don't want to revisit things you guys already talked about, but I think you have an appropriate number of bat swarms considering Ashrak effectively can create a new bat swarm if he channels his spell. Um, so, and Musgur can transfix too, which. Yeah. And then you have Musgur. Yeah. So you have a lot of shutdown capability. And Musgur can wither as well, which is and a wither. permanent shutdown of a hero if needed. The only thing is is that the musker if he fires wither currently in this legion if he fires wither at targets trying to bring them down they're just going to resist if like you have like an aragorn or something they're going to resist all of his spells so kind of wondering i mean i guess for that reason i like the inclusion of the goblin shaman if you want to fire another transfix just to break their their uh will down because I'm, I'm actually looking at this list and yeah you got nothing offensive like you have no offensive magic at all that, I, I was gonna say because i was looking at at musker and correct me if i'm wrong musker has um what's it called uh fury but it's for orcs and then i think that's why the goblin shaman's taken obviously for the for the goblins Mus but, musker does not have fury he doesn't yeah. have fury no oh i thought he did my bad um, I, I, I'm a hundred percent with, with Devin and Matt, actually, I really like the idea of the wargs with the war chieftain. And I definitely agree that this is very, very, def it's, it's actually perfectly set up to really stop anything, but you don't have anything to hurt them. So you really, really you, you feel that way? Well, yeah. I, you, you I, have I it think. I think you have an enraged need... wild war chieftain. Let me let me let have. me re let me rephrase this when I say I don't think you <laughs> have like, anything. There's a lot of offensive fire. You could, have, I... you could have an enraged and invisible spider. Let me let me let me let me try to rephrase. I, I I misspoke. I meant to say that there. I don't think there's enough. I think you could use more, and I think that maybe adding, for example, I do think that. I, I don't know. I don't. If you're going to go with the goblins, I'm not upset with the goblin shaman. I do think you, I'd rather have a goblin captain for the might. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I just think it's missing a little bit, little bit more hitting power personally. And, and even though you get to re-roll with the, the magic with Druzag and, and I, I don't know. I, I just, I think it's missing a, just a little bit more offense personally for me, for me to be happy with uh -huh. it at least. I mean, I guess when I'm summing up the, the whole of its parts, you're firing at plus one to wound from a distance at least. And so you're, you're, you're whittling down numbers there. And then once you hit combat, you're probably overwhelming your opponent with that plus the, I mean, I guess it's only six spiders. Theoretically, one of these bat swarms could become deadly. Um, I mean, I don't know. I had, would you have preferred they put prowlers in the list? Is that what you're saying? Like, I don't, you know what it is? I, I just, don't get me wrong. The spiders are going to do a lot of damage. They they absolutely are. You know, especially if one of them were to get enraged, um, or if you did that with, you know, the, the chieftain will be a little bit of an underrated, you know, hero, um, and the the goblins are there to overwhelm with numbers for dice and then hold the line. Of course, I I just wonder if if for example you come up against an, an army like let's say. So another army that has a lot of numbers, but has medium to higher tier heroes. I, I don't know how the other army doesn't do as well, because I just think that the fight value is going to kind of let down this army when it comes to fighting. Because like, again, I get that, you know, Ashrak and Druzag and Muzga, they're going to do their thing against the other, the opposing heroes. But I don't know. I, I I think don't get me wrong. I absolutely think this legendary legion is awesome, and and I do think it'll do very well. 
I just, I'm trying to, without play testing, I just think that it's missing a little bit of more hitting power, but I definitely think that this would do very well, but I don't know. Something about me doesn't like the hitting power in this potential. And I can understand it. I mean, I know that there were some variations of this list that were being tested where they spammed out prowlers just because prowlers are all throwing weapons, which really abuse this yeah. darkness rule. Um, and not to mention, technically, they could get plus three to wound under the most ideal circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, is it three? Nah. Yeah, it was savagery. That's right. Yeah, so plus three to wound. Um, <clears throat> so I suppose you could go that route. I, I He would have to take out some of these monsters to kind of fit that kind of strategy in where, where he's hitting that much harder. I, I, I don't know. Once again, I have to test this list like, yeah i'd have to i'd have to see this played on the table to see how effect it, on paper it looks amazing um but you know how does it do against this army how does it do against that army and 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 how does it you know what what is it weak against i guess is the best way to put it and then if it's weak against something how does it resolve itself against that so it's I, definitely one you got to wait for I, I will say especially at the 800 point level i think the goblin shaman is mandatory um because if, if if this list if this list hits hits a terror wall or an Angmar list, it's going to get emasculated. Because at that point, the only thing that's going to charge um, are the beasts, and that's only you know when when Druzag has his bestial fury up or whatever. And well, he does give his courage bonus too. He, he gives his courage bonus, but even still, that's that's not reliable. And the, the problem that you have is when it's when it's just the beasts charging in, um, the beasts will die. The, yeah. the beasts need to charge in amongst a bunch of goblins so that they aren't you know, ganged up on and overwhelmed. And I think if the goblin shaman is not there, they're going to get ganged up on and overwhelmed. It's going to be the problem. I, I, against a terror-causing army. I think it'll be fine against a non-terror-causing causing army, but, but still. Um, by you- the way... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, I think that this list is really interesting in the fact that they don't really have any big heroes in this list in terms of like hitting power. So anybody who brings like a wizard to kind of shut you down in that regard, it's not really going to make a difference because there's three wizards that can essentially affect things in that regard. So it's really, it, it's, it, <laughs> it almost hurts you to have big heroes against this. Really, it's well, kind of funny. Remember what the wizards and the magic users is they will be concentrating all of their firepower against Drezag. Because once Drezag yeah. once Drezag goes down, then you are if Drezag goes down, then you are right. This list doesn't have enough firepower. Mm-hmm. And that's that's kind of something to keep in mind with this list is you know, you must at all costs protect Drezag. Um, because the combat power of this list gets like cut in half once he's gone. Which is unfortunate. You got a lot of these key targets that, when gone down, because you lose, like even Ashrak. Um, I mean, yeah. Once once any of these key leaders go down, <laughs> it's like you, you pretty much are done. I'm thinking, um, which I, I guess mean, is, means I, you're I think you can live without Ashrak. Um, well, I guess his his job is done once you've selected him in the list. Yeah, right, yeah. But, I mean, he can still turn things invisible, um, uh, and that's really useful but you know as, as you say one of the big things he gets is you know a bunch of venom back so spiders and that's done so he has fury spider as well so theoretically if you actually had enough spiders in this list which is another variation of right this list to, you know then he can help out with that yep fair enough so um yeah, by the I'm- way I, I need to apologize to to folks who are actually watching this you'll notice that my background periodically gets washed out in white um that's because my wife is in the background practicing her blinding light spell. Um, so <laughs> every once in a while, you'll see that happen. Is, isn't she Lady of Light, so she gets it for free? Uh, well, she's not Lady of Light because she's actually up oh, there. She goes again um, because she's actually a hero of valor. So once she gets this spell down, she is going to be available to ally into folks list. So you know, keep that in mind when you hear that. Um, yeah, family has ascended to ultimate nerfdom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it also means, by the way, that if I suddenly disappear from the podcast, I've been banished. So, uh, 
All right, um, Matthew, if you take this to a tournament, if you take this to mm -hmm. anything, please let us know how you do with this. Uh, if you keep it the way it is, or if you took any of our suggestions into consideration. Um, and I think all we know. suggested were a few more bows. <laughs> I feel well, bad. Well, we, 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 talked well, about, we talked about the extra wargs and the, and the wild warg chieftains yeah. warband. And, yeah, and, and, and you know, a, a banner. And I, so, so look, you're on, yeah. I, let's sum this up, I guess, for, for Matt. Um, you're on the right track. This is, I think, the size type of list you want to make. Um, you could tweak this in a number of ways and in a number of different directions, I think all of which are valid. And I think none of us, because I don't think any of us have actually played this thing yet, um, know, know which direction is like the way to go at this point. Um, so, you know, take, take, take all the suggestions. If any of the suggestions resonate with you, go with them and see how it works. But you're generally on the right track with this list. Yeah, I would be curious if you took this army this legion i know this is a deep dive into this but i don't know if this will feed into this but like if you if you went deep into one direction so like let's say you wanted to take advantage of the cover of darkness rule and you were like i'm just going to ignore the fact that i can bring most beasts maybe bring a few i don't know but like you save all the points on druz hag and spiders and all that and you just go hardcore orcs and goblins and just max out on prowlers and orcs have huge overwhelming numbers get plus one to wound in fights and plus one to wound at heavy at range and also in close combat due to the fact that you're throwing knives all over the place, getting backstabber. I would be very curious. And then Musgur sure can benefit from dark magic. I'd be very curious if you just totally ignored the beast. Maybe threw in a bat swarm or, or whatever. Yeah. Bat, swarm, bat swarm and a couple of spiders for Drizag to do something with. No, no, I'm that, saying you ignore Drizag entirely. Like you don't no, even, don't take him. Yeah, like literally oh, just I see. eliminate that aspect of the list. Take Maybe some uh, some wargs and bats, maybe wargs for recon, recon or bats for, or maybe hard hitting power, maybe a little bit more of a wild warg, but sure you got to neuter big heroes. So you need bats, certainly go in there. But since Ashrak and Druzhag can't help whittle down a hero before you start casting Wither heavily, maybe you just stick with Shamans and then use their transfixes maybe to do that ultimate job. So you still have Musgur. But I'm just wondering if you went full on working goblin, would that be a more powerful list than trying to do everything, which is what this list is trying to do? Now, that, keep in mind, now we're, we're stepping away from a list review and more into theory, since that's what this episode is about, is us going into deep dives into legions. I'm just kind of curious, or even doing the opposite. What do you guys think? By the opposite, I mean go full on spider and bats and wargs, you know, and, and ignore cover of darkness and just use cover of darkness as a, a gimmick as a way to get in close. spiders. Yeah. yeah. So like, I would wonder if you swing hard in one direction or another and pick a, 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 a method, would that be a stronger list than what we have here or, or what everyone else is normally great. Yeah. So I thought about at least swinging hard in the giant <clears throat> spider direction um, which I think you could do. Um, my thought was that that would be too much of a glass cannon just because giant, giant spiders, if they like, if, if giant spiders run into fight five with spear support, they tend to die and die hard. And I don't think the venom back is going to save them in that circumstance. Um, you know, but I haven't tried it either, and I'm not entirely certain kind of how many giant spiders you could cram into this list. So that's a thought. I confess I hadn't thought about the, yeah, forget spiders. We get plus one to wound if we outnumber people. Let's just have goblins. Goblins <laughs> um, <and> yeah. <laughs> yeah, goblins and orcs. Um, and it, and remember, so you, you still have backstabbers and throwing weapons in close combat, which is sure. plus one. And, and you could so. just, so basically what you could do is you could have Buzker with a few orcs um, and then, you know, goblin shaman, goblin captain, goblin shaman, goblin captain, goblin shaman, goblin captain. Um, and yeah, I, I'd actually be really interested to I see like that how better. many figures you could, you could jam into this list to maximize that plus one to wound. I, I actually really like what Devin said there now that, now that he mentions it, because, you know, you, you, you're definitely probably going to get close to, what would, what would you say, 70 models plus with, with that situation? Oh, you're you're going to get a lot, yeah. I mean, you're gonna get you like take a, out... Huh? I just said you're going to get like 
80 or more, I think, yeah. if you're just spamming them. I would rather do this. I, 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 I actually, now that you mentioned it, Devin, and we can talk about it. I know it's different from the list, like we said, but we were also kind of talking about the, the Legendary Legion as well. So it kind of fits. I, I really like the idea of just spamming this this list with orc or with uh, the throwing weapons from the prowlers and and the the bows from the, the goblins and and just get as many as possible and then how how do you how do you fight against that because you can't shoot outside of twelve inches so you have to come to them but they're going to shoot and then when that, every time when they run into combat they're throwing throwing weapons at you at plus one it's almost like it's its own corsair model to an extent weirdly enough it, it kind of has that effect where it's like you know, okay, so we have to come to them almost because they have the, the crazy amount of crossbows. And then when we get into combat, they're still throwing throwing weapons at us every turn. So it creates that difficulty. Uh, I, wonder, I, um, I wonder how many figures you get at 650 with that list. We'd have to have someone build a list as we're talking. Because <laughs> it, it totally changes the dynamics of the list when you throw in that many prowlers. Evan um, is no doubt doing that right now as we speak. That is currently what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> we do have to be careful with two, throwing in too many prowlers, given the fact they're forced to have two hand axes. Yeah. Um, so they would definitely be one of those ones where you just have enough to really be threatening in close combat. And you can throw into combats where heroes are going to be um, doing heroic combats off your own troops, which is really nice little feature of this Legion that you're, with if you do not take shields on your goblins, as Matt was earlier suggesting, I believe it was Matt, um, then you're killing your own models on a what a four? Am I am I giving it a three onto a, a four defense? So five fours. So four up to hit, four up to wound. <laughs> um, just to knock out a hero combat in a mm-hmm. pending hero combat is not too bad. Um, not to mention the fact that if I mean if you're yeah, at 800 points, if you're around 80 models and you've got, um, you know, something like, you know, 27 bows or something like that in this list, plus the prowlers. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're you're going to do some serious damage of range. It, honestly, the only reason I'd even bring wards. See, what's interesting is you're not restricted from bats or wards unless you bring at you know spiders. Are the only ones where you need Ashrak and Trussag. So. I would bring wards to, to uh, enable the trapping mechanic for the backstabbers uh, rule, but um, just keep in mind we do have to bring orcs just because that's how the ruthless savagery. Yeah, uh, but that's fine. You you just bring like you know a dozen orcs with spear and they just stand behind goblins with bows. Oh no, actually, you know what? No, no, I'm wrong. You do not need to bring orcs at all. Oh no, well you don't. But then yeah, then it Mer- doesn't then work Musker like animosity. Is, then Mersger is on his own. I, I wonder. Well, you would you would bring orcs just by yeah. Hand. You, you, you bring like you bring like ten, but 10 everything else is goblins. Yes, exactly. Like, exactly that. That's Devin, what I'm saying. Okay. What, what what is your thought on you know obviously the the goblin prowlers are two handed, so obviously you would you know go two handed and then probably because they're defense four correct, um, you you might pierce and strike depending on what you're up against. So then you strength four plus one to wound. And then if you can outnumber, it's an additional plus one to wound, of course. But I wonder if you then go with the the double banner effect of you getting two dice to win the fight, and then if you win the fight, um, that Goblin Prowler is going to do so much damage in the front. you know. And then you're essentially getting a King's Champion effect where you get these two banners that cover a large portion of the area, and you already have a bunch of models because you're not taking much from heroes. So then you get the marches and you get the furies and... And so these models are essentially, if you can outnumber them, plus two to wound, piercing, striking, and the back support gets two dice because he gets his regular, you know, re- roll plus the re-roll from the banner. So you almost have two dice in the fight anyway, and then that prowler can just do so much damage in the front. So, so cutting in here, um, mm-hmm. so I've got it six fifty, uh, Musgar, uh, two captains, two shamans. Um, and then 15 orcs with spears, uh, one with spear and banner. Um, and then uh, 31 prowlers. Um, and then what looks like could actually probably go a bit higher on the bows. But uh, I've got 17 bows right now. Um, so in total, that's 68 models at 650. 
Wow. Very so, powerful. Considering yeah, your whole this is without any special stuff. So if I assume people would want to add in um, like wargs and stuff like that, um, just to increase mobility and stuff like that. But, yeah. Couple things actually. And one thing I'm just noticing here, if you bring warg riders or warg marauders, they all basically gain lance bonuses whenever you charge with them plus something else. Yeah. Right. So hey, if you got to fit it in captains, you got to fit it in. Yeah. You, I mean, it's 40 mil base, so it might be tricky, but if you could do it, yeah, you, you, you basically, you just gave them lances. I mean, the other thing, if you're going to bring the prowlers is, the idea of just having the wargs whose job, you know, the wargs have no job in combat. All they do is like run around behind people so they can't back up. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't even put them in combat. Down. I would literally. I, yeah, exactly. They yeah, just run around just behind so you can't back up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree. That's uh, that's an interesting uh, tactic. So. I, think there, I think there's more capabilities of doing this personally with the way Devin said, with spamming the numbers than there is with the, the list that we're seeing. And that's not to take anything away from Matthew's list. I just think Devin discovered something or thought of something that nobody was considering. And I think that that um, is, is a really great idea of, you know, you have so much versatility in the fact that you'll have so much numbers. You can throw in a bat swarm or two, you can throw in some wargs and you'll still have really, really high numbers, but you're taking advantage of throwing weapons and bows and, and all that great stuff as well. Yep. Not to mention, um, you know, I, I think Matt, is, Matthew Shorthouse, the person is submitting this list, is uh, just creating the list the way we all expect it to be made, yes. which seems like the way the writers wanted you to play it. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested in that. And I, of course, we'll play around with variations where we do the spider variant, where it's like maxing out spiders and see where that goes. But um, yeah, I, that's that's my assessment of this without having played anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure. But all right. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Uh, please let us know how you do with the list. Um, and we're going to move into the main topic for today, which is a deeper dive into the defense of the North. Um, so we each kind of picked something that we saw in the defense of the North and we're going to kind of go into it a little bit more detail of, you know, whether we like it, we don't like it, stuff like that, you know, just a, just a little bit more in depth about it. Um, so Devin, do you have one right off the start? Honestly, it would have been the Legion. We just did. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. If, 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 if it's the Lothorian Legion, we, we can just say that that's, you know, one of yours, then um, we can go on to another one. Um, Matt, if you want to go into yours. Sure. So um, the thing that I've actually been playing around with since the list came out, which should hardly be surprising given that it's kind of the, the centerpiece of the book, um, is the new Easterling Legendary Legion. Um, and I played around with it at uh, 800 points. I played around with it at, at 650. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to, I, I mean, I, I think it's great. I'm, I'm really enjoying playing it. Um, I think the reason, by the way, that I enjoy I enjoy playing it is that probably more than any other army in the game, the Easterlings and in particular, the Easterlings now that we have the legendary Legion and, you know, the, your, your ability to kind of get more troops in there is this is the list that plays the way a, a, his, you know, a, a historical period battle formation would work and rewards actual formation play. Um, you know, for, for those who have never kind of tried the Easterlings, the, the problem has always been, you know, kind of your, your inability to buy these pikes because you only got two pikes in e each box, but it's the pikes that really kind of make the formation. And the way to actually play these guys and, and win with them um, is, is to actually or at least I, I wouldn't say it's the only way to do it, but it is a it is a perfectly viable way to win with these guys to actually build something that looks like a historical phalanx, put it on the board, ram it into your opponent's fro throat, and just kind of like run him over. And that that was less effective before the rules. Now that you can get fight five out of these guys and banner all of these guys, and you can get cheaper black dragons and thus more figures. 
you can actually make this tactic work. So you can get like a 12 figure wide phalanx that's three deep and just kind of like throw it into somebody's front line. And it just kind of like runs over the enemy's front. Anyway, so that's that's part of what I'm enjoying about it. Um, the, the, the question I have is, so at 800 points, the, the builds I've been coming up with are um, if you get if you get the three the three leaders you're supposed to take, which is the Emperor uh, Rutabi and Brogir, uh, and those are all you get. You can go up to like 48 models with a decent amount of of cav in there. You end up with I think about five or or six uh, cataphracts uh, in there. Um, or, or your alternative is you can bring the model count down to, I think, about 42 and throw in a, um, uh, what are those guys called? Um, dragon Knights. Yeah, throw in a Dragon Knight, um, which gets you another Fight 5 striking hero who's vulnerable to magic but does get the extra roll in the duel because of the, the uh, army bonus. Um, and I think I'm kind of leaning toward doing that um i guess so the first question i have to pose is what are what are what are people's thoughts of kind of the 800 level more figures or the dragon knight go i'm just i'm just gonna quickly say my thing here because uh dad and i have already talked about this um he um the fir when we were first writing lists for this stuff he immediately made that 48 model list and the first easterling list i made was the the 42 model list so we definitely off the bat had um had different thoughts about how this list uh would be run um and um, i think i i think i definitely prefer uh like like he said i prefer the second one <clears throat> which is it provides more power. I think a cavalry hero is um, necessary in this list uh, to be able to exert more control over the battlefield and to be able to, uh, to get a fast moving model that can benefit greatly uh, from Broer Gear's uh, uh, power boosting spells. Uh, and I think 42 models is uh, perfectly fine, especially seeing as uh, uh, the the uh, plus one fight value bonus is only six inches. And I think what really makes the Easterlings is that plus one fight value bonus because fight five is just ludicrous. Uh, the two of us actually played a, a doubles game against a dwarf player uh, in Lords of Battle and the Easterlings just absolutely demolished the dwarves entirely, mostly because of that fight five and the, the ability to win on sixes. So my opinion is the second list. That combo of fight five and stacked pikes and all of that is just gruesome. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go toward having more numbers with that, but I, I have not played this whatsoever. So um, I, I don't really know what the best direction to go is. I, did you guys, I know I used to toy around with a list where it was like Urukai pikes. And then what I did was I put four captains kind of in the front and just had them just powerhouse through like the middle of a line and then you know come out on the other side i mean have you made any consideration of maybe spamming out dragon knights where it's the dragon emperor just so prohibitively expensive that you wouldn't really be able to do that well it's it's not that the dragon emperor is prohibitively expensive the dry I, I have thought about that the dragon knights are prohibitively expensive um and it, it it's that in combination with the fact that th there's a kind of minimum size to the phalanx where it, it ceases to kind of have the effect you need it to have. Um, and that minimum size is probably about eight files wide. Um, if, it gets, if it gets smaller than that, um, then, I mean, unless something else is going on with the army, which, you know, it probably isn't if you're playing the Legion, then it, it gets surrounded up and swallowed. Um, but you, you, you want to have that, you want to have that turn where at least kind of eight files go in and you, you know, you, you go in, you want to, you want to time it so that he's not spilling around the flanks. You're, you're basically controlling when that thing goes in. Um, and 
and you want to you want to be able because that thing can can kill four or five models on the initial impact just in warriors and 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 I guess the only reason I'm the only reason I'm hesitating about the Dragon Knight, by the way, is that this list with the Dragon Emperor is not one that wins its games by having big heroes kill a bunch of figures. This this list wins its games by having your warriors kill their warriors and basically have your warriors kill enough of their warriors so that you are. So that even though their big heroes are killing a couple of your warriors a turn, your 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 kill ratio is still positive just because you're killing so many of their warriors. Um, and which, by the way, is Rutabi's job too. Is she just is is you know hacking through? She doesn't go in and fight the other heroes. She just hacks through warriors a turn. Have you found um, her master of battle to be useful? Oh oh, it's it's essential. It it makes it makes the list work. Um. And it makes the list, I mean, it makes the list work because it keeps the Easterlings in the mic game and gives them the ability to kind of win the mic game against lots of hero armies. Um, and because, you know, the, the problem that the heroes, you know, the problem with the mounted heroes have is if they, if they lose the, um, if, if they lose the, the charge, you know, if they lose their charge bonus and a couple of files of pikes go into them, um, they can't afford to lose a combat because they're definitely going to lose their horse and you know they might just die. So they have to keep calling the heroic moves. And that just gives Rutabi the constant fuel to kind of keep stuff in the game. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, I also think it, it partially depends on whether you're playing a scenario where you win by killing stuff in which case I think you want the Dragon Knight or you win by kind of maneuvering, in which case you may want the extra figures just so that you have, I mean, it, the, the problem with the Dragon Knight build is you end up with like three cataphracts, which is enough if you're going to run them, you know, try and run the Dragon Knight and three cataphracts off the board and reconnoiter, but it's not quite enough where you can kind of like send them off in any, in various directions just to sit on objectives where you know you have like one cataphract sitting on this objective one cataphract sitting on that objective one cataphract sitting on that objective and then you have your phalanx kind of ramming up the middle and kind of killing the army mm. um but you know they're they're going to be different scenarios i think where you want that dragon knight i don't know that was that was the thought the the real the real critical question is at 650 points because at 650 points you get the dragon emperor that's the must take you get Rutabi, that's the second must take. And you can either afford a Dragon Knight or a Burgir. And at 650 points. I think Burger would be better with the Dragon Emperor, though, that combo. Unless I'm seeing it wrong. But well, yeah, I mean I mean it is a trade-off, right? Because right. you know, you have Burgir spells which can mess with other people, they can they can you know boost the dragon emperor they can boost um uh they can boost rutabi with the killing power but you know burgier is burgier's role on the battlefield is basically to follow rutabi around and just kind of like stand behind her where he can't get killed and cast spells and occasionally add in an additional die um but you know the dragon knight can actually like gallop around and kill stuff and kill stuff pretty reliably given that he's both bannered and gets the reroll on the, on the dual roll. But you, know, you run into Angmar with a dragon knight and that dragon knights a good amount of the time is going to be sitting there kind of like watching the show from a distance. That's the problem. And, and so is, you know, some of your army probably just because of terror. So yeah, I, I wonder if in good versus evil, you take, the Dragonite, and then um, in uh, in anything goes, you take uh, Borgir. Yeah, that that may actually be that may be an answer. Any thought on um, for the Legendary Legion for for spamming cataphracts because they get to fight five um, because they get the Black Dragon upgrade? What what are your thoughts on like you know 
anywhere from like let's say six to ten cataphracts in the in the in the army to do all, you know fight five damage on the charge for 14 points essentially um is that is that taking away too many numbers for you guys or is that so so 10 probably does um i don't think six does um at least at high you know at like 800 points level and above um I mean, I, I think I had, I think I had a list, I think my 48 figure list had six cataphracts in it and, and they're useful because you can put three on one side of the phalanx, three on the other side of the phalanx. And, you know, where fight five matters, you swing the dragon emperor are kind of in that direction and you get the, uh, you get the extra fight five. And, you know, when, for, for the points you pay for them, getting the free upgrade to black dragon they are they are well worth the points um especially you know especially if you can get them in like the little three packs because i almost think that you always buy the cataphracts in three packs um just to get the plus one defense because you know having defense seven cavalry yeah. is you know pretty useful and um yeah i mean they 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 don't hit as hard as they could because they're only strength three and they're you know they don't have any plus ones but it if you want somebody something to go stand on an objective and say i you know move me off i dare you um they're really useful for doing that yeah cuz I, I i just look at that that uh, that ability to have a bunch of fight 5 you know cavalry models with courage 4 uh and then obviously like you said in pack of 3 so you have defense 7 on the horse and you have more importantly defend six on the horse itself with the armor against shooting. So they're really hard to take off their horses. And I just look at them and I go for 14 points in this Legion. They're more cost effective than a serpent guard who does its job really, really well, which I think we are or a serpent rider. I'm sorry. Um, who does their job really well based on cost effectiveness. I think that the cataphract with all these bonuses is way too good to not use. And I, and I, I've never played it with, with the Legion, of course, but I look at that and I just, I'd almost want to spam Cataphracts because it looks so good to have that for that points value. Yeah. I mean, the other thing not, the other thing not to forget is they move, they can move 15. Yes. With the drum and the drum is 15 yeah, points. So, yeah. I mean, it, there, there's this point, there's this kind of inflection point that you have in the battle with the Easterlings where you're basically in this one mob that's kind of like moving up the center and you got like your phalanx in front. You get your two wings of the pikes, and you got um, Rutabi backed by Burger in the center, and you got the Dragon Emperor kind of sitting behind it all. And then, you know, around him are this kind of cluster of um, uh, cataphracts. And then when you're when you're about a foot away from the enemy, you know, especially in an objective game, you know, you're all in the middle, and like nobody's contesting objectives, whatever. And then that drum beats, and all of a sudden the phalanx is right up in your face and the cataphracts have gone and secured all of the objectives. And you see the look on the other guy's face. Who's like, wait a second. How did this happen in one turn? <laughs> um, Just curious. Do you open the lines and bring the dragon emperor forward? Or do you keep him behind the lines until cotton hits? He stays behind the lines until the other guy's big heroes have been committed. And you know, kind of where the big heroes are. Mm. And um then once the big heroes have been committed and are kind of bogged down trying to hack their way through the phalanx you know basically the phalanx opens a hole someplace else and he goes into it and he just starts calling heroic combats because he can he can just mow through four figures a turn yeah. calling heroic combats because he gets those extra six attacks um and and you know that that's his role is you you find a place where the enemy the enemy leaders aren't because Rutabi and the Phalanx's job is just to tie up the other big hitting heroes. And then the Dragon Emperor kind of goes in and just kind of like rolls over troops somewhere. So with the Dragon Emperor being kind of the crux of your fight five, have you ever found yourself in a position where, because it sounds like you're rolling him over to a flank. So like, have you ever found like then the other side gets weakened because of the yeah, banner. that okay. that happens. I mean, you still have the banner there, and it depends what kind of army you're fighting. Because if you're fighting fight three, it doesn't matter. Yeah, true. Yeah. But if you're fighting fight four, oftentimes you're making a conscious choice of, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have fight five on this flank, and I'll have a banner, but not fight five on the other flank. 
Um, yeah, sometimes what happens is um, uh, that the, the big heroes will try and go around one side or the other of the phalanx. And when that happens, what you can do is you can take the phalanx and just kind of like part it like the Red Sea and the Dragon Emperor kind of like goes up the middle. Um, and then you can get the fight five all around. Yeah, that's great. So I'm noticing you never mentioned the acolytes or the uh, the war drakes. So you haven't tested them or just simply not interested? I haven't tested the war drakes. I mean, so I know some people really like the dragon acolytes. Sorry, um, they're about to say the tricks. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, and and I've used like one, two, or three of them. Um, and, and you know, I, I usually have at least one in there, um, and whose job is just kind of to run around the flank of one of the phalanx with like a pike behind it, just to make it hard to get around there. But I just my play style with them is so phalanx centered that. You know, I'm basically like, all right, I have my heroes. I have, uh, you know, as many cataphracts as I want to put into this list and the drum. And then I buy every pikeman I can, you know, every, you know, basically phalanx file I can. And whatever points I have left over where I can't do another file to the phalanx, then I'll buy like a dragon acolyte and a pike and stick it in. And that's, I guess that's it. Tim, you were saying you like the Runish Wards, right? I love the profile. I, we, we, we were actually having a discussion about this in um, in the Facebook group chat that we have. And I was looking at the profile. And let me just pull it up real quick. Um, just so I can and I can guarantee. Please, please do so we can have a healthy debate on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we're on the same side of this. You don't like them? I'm not a fan of the profile so, um, so I, I feel this i feel the same way it's like they have no synergy at all with the rest of the list and their well, profile is also just not good let, let's like let tim make his case before we all proceed Indeed. to demolish him <laughs> so and keep in mind what are we assuming 25 or 40 mil base because i assume I, I think we have to assume 40 mil base well that's the, the biggest problem with them is probably going to be the base size right like that's going to be the issue but I was talking about this with Rainier in the, in the chat. And basically, um, lowering, if you could get this in on a hero, lowering the, the fight value and attacks by one for the game, if you could get a wound on this thing, I, I think is so, you can cripple a hero with this. And I'm not saying you take four or five, you take one, maybe two. And, and I think they, they have their, their purpose of hero hunting, and if you can get that, even on a captain, to take a captain down from, let's say, fight five to fight four with one attack, they're just a regular warrior at that point almost. You know, obviously they have the might, but I, I think the runish war drakes, especially with the venom too, and, you know, they have the two wounds, the two attacks, obviously defense five and fight four. But if, if they can get onto a hero with something else, uh, let's say a big hero. Let's say you got him onto an, an Aragorn, right? And let's say you couldn't take out Aragorn in one turn. This thing basically goes, okay, so he, Aragorn's going to go down to fight five, and he's going to go down to two attacks. So yes, he has his free point of might where he has to strike, but that he basically has to do that from that point because there's so much fight six in this army now. Um, and uh, But I, I really like the idea of really crippling a hero with this trick. Um I think it has a really good purpose in that, even though it might be difficult at times to get into that situation. But also it's two attacks and two wounds, so it's not exactly vulnerable. If you take it as a 10-point model, essentially it's, you know, fight four, strength four, defense five with uh, one attack, one wound almost. So it's, it, it kind of makes up its points in that regard. And because it's a passive ability as well, um, it can it, you can't shut that ability down Plus, it's got the venom for rerolling. So, I don't know. I think I think it's very decent. I think it's a very good little model to to throw one or two into an army. I'd say I'd agree with a lot of you going. You're arguing going into like the big heroes, like Aragorns and such. If it was strength five, I could. Yeah, but then at twenty points, I mean, I I don't know. Strength five. Uh, I, half trolls of strength five. Yeah, half, have strength half five. trolls are the uh, earnings of strength four, but they have plus one oh, to plus wound one. and an axe, so they're like strength 
they're strength five or whatever they were. Seven, want basically, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the, 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 you know, I do wonder why these things, I mean, maybe it's just that the concept of um, it being a, a Drake instead of a Warg Rider, but I mean, I think if you're going to no, put these- it is cool. It is a cool thing. Like Runish Wardrake is one of those out of left field models that when you when I saw the book and I saw that and I was like, oh, they got really fancy with this because I, I just wouldn't have expected they would have been like, yeah, they could absolutely tame a miniature dragon and send that into battle. I'm like, all right, you know, they figured it out, I guess. Um, I think if if to just that one change of strength five, I could definitely see the argument. The fact that you get two dice needing sixes to wound defense seven. Really, it's just like, man, like, now keep in mind, this is assuming 40 mil. If this thing comes out at a 25 mil base, then yeah, I probably actually would stick one of the two of these because you could easily slot it in. But he's going to take up a lot of space if he's on 40, which everyone's yeah. expecting. So, um, just imagining a runish war drake and a pike block with two well, easterling pike guys behind them. Behind them. Yeah. Well, they don't have failings rule, I guess, right? So could they? Oh, well, it oh, doesn't yeah, matter. You'd still pike, pike support them. Yeah. Yeah. Still, yeah. Um, so, so the bigger problem for me than the the fight five is the move six because yeah. the move six yeah. if this is if this is on a 40 mil base these guys will never be able to hunt heroes because they're never going to be able to get in contact with heroes um because they're they're if you put them in the middle of the phalanx they're going to get locked in and they're going to be fighting whatever random random you know spearman happens to be in front of them um, and if you put them on the flank of the phalanx, which is, I think, where they need to go because they're 40 mil um, base, the heroes are just going to go someplace else. And once the heroes go someplace else, the Runish War Drakes are never going to be able to get in contact with them. And they're going to fight ordinary guys. And when they're fighting ordinary guys, their venoms are relevant. Um, so what you end up having is a 20 point model that does have two attacks, um, but uh is only fight four and you know you could buy for you could buy for six points less a uh a, a defense six cataphract that's quite possibly going to be up at fight five is also going to get two attacks on the charge um you know it's it's strength is one less but it's significantly cheaper um then and, and i think that's right no, Venom is oh okay, so it's got slow active Venom. No, I think Venom is reroll ones. Yeah, reroll ones. Re-roll ones. Re-roll ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah reroll yeah. ones. Um, if it was it's... reroll everything, I take back this. I'm actually going to reconsider that. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I mean that that's the issue for me at least is the is the move six combined with the 40 mil base. I, I agree with you. If this comes out on a 25 mil base, this is an entire. Are, are we different. sure Venom is reroll ones? By the way. I don't know. Maybe we're not. Maybe Venom. Let's, is well, 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 what are that. the two? One's reroll ones. The other one's reroll everything. Yeah, there's yeah. poisoned weapons, and then there's Venom. What's the other? But, what's the other name? It's Venom and what? Well, there's poisoned weapons. Oh, yeah. is that is that what it is? Yeah, poisoned weapons is the uh, that's the one like Haradrim and yeah. all that. Um, and then it'll say what kind of weapon they have. So, like for spiders, they have poisoned weapons. And then but aren't they Venom back spiders, and they reroll everything? Yeah, uh, I think I think Venom Venom rerolls to wounds. Rerolls everything. But e- right. either way, you do right. have to. I was Is thinking it? as well. You do have to weigh the opportunity costs if you can get somebody into a hero. Do you want this guy in on a hero, or do you want six guys on a hero instead? I, do you I'm want just, two guys charging and then four pikes behind them? Um, so, I, I think these guys, and 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 and, and I agree with you that. You know, you would want the numbers kind of. I'm saying I, I think these guys are really good, and I actually agree with Matt. Um, I know Devin, we would talk about strength <laughs> five, but I actually agree with Matt. I'd rather have movement ten on these guys than than the strength five. I think if they had movement ten, that would really make them. I fantastic. think reasonably I think they, they should be move movement. eight. I think. Yeah, at least um, eight. Because right? I don't think they'd faster. be. They wouldn't be as fast as like a warg or something like that. Um, but I think you know they're. I haven't seen the model, so I don't know if they're quadrupedal or not, but I think because they're like, you know, beasts and if farmer maggots dogs can run eight, then these guys can probably run eight as well. Yeah, no, I agree. At least eight, at least eight. I wasn't analyzing. So when I said the strength five, my, I don't know what the thing looks like. I'm assuming it's so weighed down by armor that it can't go faster, but I've never seen the model. Obviously I don't, 
you know, known that. So essentially that was my assumption with the, the, the move six. Cause otherwise, yeah, it makes zero sense. They move six. I can't yeah. think so, of any other reason. Well, it can't be weighed down by armor because it's defense. It, it's going to have scales. It says it's armor. <laughs> Does it actually um, say armor? It says he has armor. Yeah. It says he has armor. Yeah. So that's why well, I figured, all right, put, maybe. Why would you put armor? <laughs> That, that that's what I was like. All right, maybe I'll, uh, I'll take defense four for movement. Pad ima- the imagine case. the Smith that has to make that armor. You want me to make what now? <laughs> well, you know, it, it's funny you say that, but there was uh, Evan, you remember the Higgins armory up, up in Worcester yeah. with the, uh, with the armor displays. There was that one of the things they, the Higgins armory is was someplace that used to be in Worcester. That was basically this, this old style industrialist that had uh, collected you know, this enormous collection of medieval armor. And one of the things that they had on display there was, uh, was a suit of dog armor that you like put on your hunting dog Hmm. that, uh, and you know, I'm sure it's the same thing with the Drake, but, but yeah, interestingly enough, I'm looking at the, the ebook version of the rules here. Venom is not in the rules. What? It goes, it goes straight from it. It's T U V, right? It goes straight from unyielding combat stance to will of evil. All right, I shall look up then. We we probably have someone with a book in the audience who's just like, "Come on, guys!" Like yeah. right there, a whole analysis right there. is getting all screwed. <laughs> I mean, you may be right on Venom, but um, it, if yeah, Venom, it, it 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 doesn't it doesn't move the needle for me. Um, the yeah, I mean, th- these guys are not out of play. I might take one of them and stick it on the end of a phalanx, but I'm not going to have any expectation that I'm going to use it to kill a hero with it. Here's That's my only. Pro- the slow acting venom is a gimmick that I think, in my mind, I am ignoring that rule except for the psychological value it plays, mm-hmm. which is what Tim, it, like, I don't think I'm ever going to hit the hero, but just like a catapult, it's like kind of like that. It's like, do you expect to decimate with strength 10? No, you expect to scatter the forces because of that effect. Just that in their mind, I'm kind of like, okay, could I use that? And, you know, especially against a player who hasn't fought against them before, here's that rule. And it's like, well, that sucks. I'm not moving Aragorn to that side. And I'm like, great. <laughs> like, that's exactly what I wanted to prevent. Yeah. So, so, you know, in my mind, the rule is there to never really be used. Maybe, maybe once a, a 10 games, you'll that's, use it. I, I, I actually, I, I think that, it's. I think it's going to be one of those rules where it rarely comes up. Now, you know, they because I, I think Devin's put it. It's right on target. It, it really is that that scare tactic, right? Like when you get a bat swarm, even though it has its function and it will work, the, the bat swarm just scares you when you see it against you, right? And so if the Drake does that effect, but even if it can get onto troops, you know, and and let's say against orcs or or something that fight three or. I, I think having one, maybe two of these would be good in a force. So, uh, uh, fun fact, it's not in the main book either. Venom is a rule that does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. It's completely useless. <laughs> um, we well, can only I, I, assume I, it means poison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, what does yeah. Shelob and the Spider Queen have, then? I'm going to check now, actually. Yeah. Like, I, I like how, by the way, that we're putting the slow-acting Venom special rule on the same plane as, say, like, nuclear weapons. You know? <laughs> okay, so to be fair, I don't exactly expect to have that effect. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure someone will walk up with Aragorn and be like, whatever. <laughs> Just kill it. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to forget that rule exists instantly if I ever play against one of these guys. Well, and you won't need to because, as, as Devin points out, like, Aragorn is going to walk up to one of these things, hack its head off, and say, huh, I wonder what that was and what special rules it had. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. <laughs> well, you, can, I, can I just bring up a small thing that kind of irks me, even though it doesn't... Why does, a, why does a dragon have venom? When has that ever been a thing where a dragon has venom? Like, what? You couldn't have made, like, some kind it's, of fire? It's not, it's not a dragon. I did say dragon is a joke earlier, but a Drake is a dragon, kind of, isn't it? Well, I, it Tim, are you depends on what they're interpreting as a dragon. Tim, Tim, are you saying it's historically an accident? on the type of Drake, <laughs> possibly. Possibly. <laughs> I, I mean, come on, everybody. We all know that dragons don't have venom. I mean, yes, exactly. On. This is a simulation. I don't. I can't. Uh, no, all this real world evidence that dragons yeah, definitely exactly. do not have venom. We can prove it. That's the point, right? And, I don't right. know. That's, that's so something that G-Lob has venom. 
Does it say a page number by any chance? You know, sometimes the rules say page Apparently number. Apparently, I, I just totally missed this. Hang, hang on a second. I'm going to find, let me see if I can find the, because um, I should be able to cross index using the electronic version. Let me. Uh, I can't Maybe imagine. The I, FAQ. I, think we've, I think we've done enough fumbling around on this. No, no, um, we must We must run this oh, down. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Go to Bane of Kings. Go to Bane of Kings uh, in the rule book. Uh, Here's the reason I only find it important is because they may, I'm they to may analyze have it. put them together. So, so if you do the cross index on the electronic version, it goes to Venom active. This model must re-roll all failed to wound rolls when making strikes in close combat. Okay, so I'm gonna so they don't need strength five if that's the case. You effectively have four dice to try to deliver one wound. I'm okay with that. Um, that's above fifty percent, a sixty percent almost. So. So in my mind, I'm like analyzing this profile is just, okay, the the gimmick of the slow acting venom, probably not Aragorn. We'll agree Aragorn's probably not going to care, but a mountain troll may actually not want to deal with this thing in the fact that, you know, you get three dice, no might. You know, how many people use monsters, but, you know, that that's a consideration. But I'm like 20 points for something that rerolls all fails now, and it has terror, which we could take into account if you happen to play this in a normal Eastern list with like Kamul or something. Uh, with a harbinger, um, I'm not mad at testing it. Right, I'll put it that way. That like, I it, it's not offending me as much with that venom with rule, that rule in place. So, oh. so just just to keep drilling down to the bottom of this particular rabbit hole, I went and I started, you know, poking the buttons to kind of drill down to try and find on the electronic version um, where this rule lives, and I did eventually get a pop up window. And and here you can see the pop up window that came up uh, on my electronic <laughs> rule book. And for those of you who are listening at home, the pop up window says Venom, Venom film 2018 drama. Venom is a 2018 American superhero <laughs> superhero film featuring the Marvel con comics character of the same name. And it gives me some options of how to watch this on Apple TV. So. Thank you, EPUB, for <laughs> the rule book for giving me this reference. <laughs> what we were looking for. I was looking for the rule book reference for Venom. We all right. Well, we'll we'll go with the rerolls all fails. I actually, <laughs> yeah. I it, will say, think, thinking of it again, I, it should be. I think Bane of Kings slash Venom is the special rule, so it would be earlier on in the alphabet in the special rules section. And um, it, I'll but check it in either, the background. Either but, way, we've we've been yeah. talking about these stupid dog dragon things for way too long so uh let, <laughs> let's move on about to about something let's, else let's right. we'll give this for this episode maybe i'll title it as just like deep dive into these three legions so maybe we'll okay. pick one more if we're going to do it at all or or all right. we make the episode just these two and then we and, do another episode well, we were, we were also going to talk dive? about yeah so um Mine was a quick uh, a quick edit um, because we forgot to mention this in the last podcast. Uh, Thorin has been buffed, um, the the new Thorin. So in the experimental rules, he was 120 points, and they buffed him to 110 now, um, which uh -huh. I think uh, does a lot to his uh, viability, from what I've seen, <laughs> because. Usually, uh, for both the Legendary Legion and the list, you would compare him to Dwalin. And Dwalin was both cheaper and he hit harder. Uh, and uh, he had more attacks and stuff like that and had the same might points. So you'd probably always take Dwalin. But now that Thorin is cheaper than Dwalin, I think there is a more justifiable reason to take him. So just this as a quick aside. Yes, Thorin has been buffed. So if you were thinking about uh, not taking him, uh, now there's a better reason to take him because he's less expensive. I, I, I you know, if I can, th the, the dwarves are always interesting, right? Because I, I always, I love playing dwarves. I think they're a lot of fun to play as. Um, and I don't like how there's so many heroes, but then what ends up happening, it's like the Mordor effect, right? There's actually a couple decent, really decent heroes in Mordor, but they get overshadowed because there's so many ones that are better. So you just end up seeing the same ones taken. 
And it's a real shame because then there's some armies, right, where you don't get at, you, you would kill for a hero like that. But of course, then it doesn't become that that situation where you're basically stuck with the same two heroes because there's only two heroes to take in that army. So the dwarves, I, I always I always get upset with the dwarves because they have so many good heroes, but they could be used in different armies almost. So it's a shame to see stuff like that. Damn for me. dwarves. <laughs> Um, yeah, what's, ca- what's weird about this list, sorry, Tim, but what's weird about this is it almost feels like this is exactly the same list as Army of Thror, like almost exactly, because it's got the six inch banner. It's got basically almost no cavalry, except for like, maybe you're taking a captain on goat and maybe some a couple of goat riders. And then it's just chaff strength for uh defense seven troops that you're spamming out um maybe with some crossbows in there so uh and i think the structure would be similar as well because army of thor at 800 700 800 points you'd take uh thror thrain and captain and at 700 800 points for this list you'd probably take um dane thorin and a mounted captain and then just a bunch of guys as well. So it seems to be structured very, very similar, both in army bonuses and the types of models you can use. Though this army does have the benefit of having both cavalry and crossbows. You'd probably see the variation at higher points when you take all the other dwarves. You need need a lot of higher points before you start taking all the other dwarves. I always feel like when I look at the dwarves, like special rules and whatnot, it just feels like it's like, oh, what what do the dwarves need? Oh, we'll just give them a banner. That that makes sense. We'll just give them a banner. They always need one of those, right? So I I don't know With the dwarves. It, does, it doesn't feel as creative as compared to other armies when I look at what they get sometimes, because it's like everyone knows that the dwarves need the banner, but you couldn't you couldn't make that a part of some like a, a special hero's rule compared to the like the army bonus kind of a thing. I think you're starting to see examples of them branching out from the usual because yes, I do think the whole banner bonus is played out in some art. I mean it's it's pretty much like almost now a mandatory requirement. Yeah, you have to have a banner. <laughs> you have to have Everybody a banner army banner. effect. Um so yeah, no, I mean I I, <laughs> I I do see some effort to to push it in one direction. Then of course there's areas where they go to more familiar. So um, so I, I think if you actually looked at all the profiles, uh, when we've been looking at every supplement from Middle Earth SVG, I mean, there's right from day one where they were like, all right, Huron, let's make it where you can take command. Like, I mean, th- like they, they've been, you can definitely see some experimentation. And then of course, where you're seeing some, all right, let's bring back to familiar just in case we've gone too far or something. That's the scene, what I'm looking at here. But <clears throat> All right, so do we have, I guess, what, one more Legion or something? Yeah, other? I've got one if you want to go over. Uh, I was going to talk about the Bay Warnings uh, just because they were really interesting to me. I wonder what you guys think about the, the army as a whole, just because, you know, obviously. Variation, Legion or just. I'm, I'm going to say Legion. Oh, okay. I'm going to say Legion. Um, and, and I wonder because obviously the heroes are expensive and then the models themselves are expensive. And I wonder if how you feel that those models are going to do in a tournament setting or even just a regular game based on the amount of numbers you'll have, even though they are pretty strong for, you know, 20 points. Well, let's talk about it. I don't think you're playing them at 650, but let, how many, if you were to play Grim Bayorn plus Bayornings, how many Bayornings? Well, you have to play Bayorn in that case because yeah, um, yeah you wouldn't have enough. You'd have too many troops. So uh, how, what would you get? So 400 and then, 250 Four. points of bay warnings um and, and i forgot how much how so many 20 points 20, each. 20 points each um, yeah exactly is, is grim bay higher than 500 now? yeah at higher than 500 points you need to take both bears yeah okay so then with that being forced in how many so what is what is 250 20 points of, or uh, 12, 12. 12 bay warnings? Yeah. Nah, I think you're screwed, honestly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you'd have to then fill up both the war bands. So what point level would be required to, not maybe not fill them up, but maybe get you to 
20. If we did 20 times 20, that's 800, 800. 800 points. Okay. So the question becomes, are two giant bears and 20 bay earnings good enough? Take on Matt's phalanx. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what I want. Cause like they get the bannery roll and they get the two dice, obviously. Hmm. And they're, you know, they're, they're fight five, correct? Yep. Yeah. So they're fight five and they get plus one to wound and, I, I don't know. I like I, I, I can I always compare them to half trolls almost when I look at them because they're so similar in, in profile, obviously. Which is what um, I think they wanted. Yeah, and, and and I just don't obviously they're two wounds, which helps them out a little bit, but they're not defense six like the half trolls, which kind of hurts them. Yeah, um, five of carry saves though. Yeah, they do. You're right. And and so that would definitely help them in, in that regard. Now no, I don't no. want, Sorry, that only applies to the bears. It doesn't apply to the Bionis, right? I believe. Well, do they have bear in their name? Or because that seems weird that they wouldn't do that. <clears> that the no, time. the Bionis never actually transformed into bears. That ability was only granted to uh Grim Bayorn and Bayorn. Yeah, but the rest of the Bayonings couldn't do it. None of that is relevant if they have bear in their name. Hang on, I'll that's what I was referring to, to bear in their name. <laughs> that's what I yeah. was going for. Uh, they I, I understand the lore, but we don't care about the lore. We care about the rules. <laughs> uh, man, Bayorning infantry warrior. No, so yeah, they're Bayornings, not bears. So yeah, they wouldn't. That's they wouldn't. weird that they. I, I'm, all right, so it's just the heroes that get the, the fury save then, which uh, is significant. Well, unless there's something in the legion, and I can't remember if there's something in the legion or not. Knowing you get the five up save on Bayorn and Grim Bayorn, I mean it's. Um, I, I, Bayorn. Thing, yeah. I played lists with all half trolls. In fact, ironically, me and Evan uh, had a game where I played a list with all half trolls. It's, I honestly think the only, I don't know, Evan, what was your analysis of it? Do you think my list worked because I had a Nazgul in the list or because um, they were, the, 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 the half trolls actually just powered through everything? Um, I think my analysis of that list is uh well i think it functioned i think i shot you off your nazgul like almost immediately oh, yeah, you did. so i don't yeah. think that was relevant yeah. um i think my analysis of that is my army matchup wasn't the greatest because i had survivors of lake town and they one can't charge your terror and two uh absolutely die in combat to half trolls Nice. And also, I, I secondly played like an idiot, uh, which didn't help. Um, but I, I think I think the army could have some merit. It's just, it's not going to win tournaments, I don't think. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't rate it highly. I, my experience, uh, that tournament's the only one I brought it in. And I, I, I went against Evan. And then, of course, yeah, your army was way a bad matchup for it. And then I went against Matt and... My army just got mowed down by an Iron Hills chair champion. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was a bad matchup with the other you, side. You did, you, did the chari- you did kill the chariot. I did though. kill the chariot. So I expect the Bjornings to kill the chariot and then they'll die from that point. Well, no, technically they I think I think when I when they killed the chariot, you had like three figures left on the board or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and, and then uh, four dwarves got off of the chariot, dusted themselves off, and were like, let's just finish these guys. <laughs> Uh, what so, are your what are your, uh, go ahead? Doug. Well, I guess go bleeding into that. Um, if I had two giant bears combined with that half troll contingent, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm really interested to find out. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, I think they've if uh, barring a bad matchup, like probably in my head, I'm thinking Angmar. Because I think Angmar has enough magical firepower to take down a bear. Remember they remember they all resist magic. Yeah, and that and I am considering that. But here's the thing: I've played Angmar at Warhammer World and a little bunch of. But basically, even when someone fires up a, 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 a what's her name, Lady of Light, you know, protecting spell, um, even when they get two extra dice, I. St- Still, with Angmar, have enough magical firepower to just beat through that defense. Um, granted, it takes a hell of a lot more will, but you can do it. But you only have two targets to spend your will on in this case, whereas normally you have to save will for other occasions. So I don't know. Like, well, I've... so so part of the issue here is that the bears are sufficiently. I mean, the way Angmar does this, right, is they they transfix somebody. Gulivar goes in. Um, and slaughters them 
these two bears, you trans if you end up transfixing a bear and Gulivar goes in. Yeah, he there's does. a significant <laughs> there's a significant chance that Gulivar is just going to bounce off, and then the bear will tear the head off of Gulivar the next turn. That is true. That is very. Um, so, I mean, you really have to channel transfix these guys if you actually want to have a shot at bringing them down. You know, I, I actually wonder if this I mean, would do well I, then. Well, I just go- use Gulivar to murder mm-hmm. Bay Ornings. I think. Let, yeah, you like, can, but go in kill. Yeah to crow combat kill, kill four in right. one turn and then just win the scenario and ignore the bears or just use my barrel whites and casters to shut down the bears while i kill all the bay ornings like especially if you have a shade where you can actually win fights against the uh, bay ornings and because they're low defense you can ca- kill them relatively easily um, I don't think the the Angmar matchup is very good for that army. Well, remember the downside for Angmar is going to be you have to actually close with these guys, and you're going to have to close against seven great bows. Uh, would you? Okay, okay, so they, that's interesting. You're you're basically announcing you would one third the great bows for sure. I I, I think so. Okay. I mean, granted the axes are good, but I think you want those seven great bows for precisely those situations where. You the enemy has no firepower. The enemy has no or little firepower, and um, you know you just you, you're going to stand back and shoot those seven great bows into him until he gets within range, and then you'll you're going to charge him. I I was to be honest with you, I <laughs> I was just about to bring up the, the great bow question, and I don't know, maybe you guys disagree with me on this. I actually think that they're an army where every single one of them should be able to swap for a bow, personally. I, I don't agree with the, the third rule for them with the bay ornings. I think they should be able to all. Oh, if, if they, if they could all get, if they could, if you could get 20 bad. great bows in this army. Yeah, exactly. That'd be pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. But, no, but does it take them to that point though, where they're competitive? You see what I'm saying? Like right now that we're talking about them, maybe they're I mean, competitive. Rem- maybe. Re- well, yeah. If, if you, if, if you, if you gave them 20 great bows, they would be, um, uh, yeah, Faramir's Rangers with bears. Archai crossbows are devastating at 12. Like, yeah, exactly. I, I mean, sure, Corsairs. I don't even think Corsairs get to 20. And but the thing is, at least with Corsairs, you know you're not fighting two bears and a bunch of half trolls once you get into combat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, if you were gonna do that legion, you just would you just modify <laughs> Faramir's Rangers so that oh, by the way, they also get two bears. They also get two <laughs> bears. <laughs> 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 yeah, I can see. Yeah, you know, it was funny when they were when they were bringing out hero after hero to kind of reinforce that uh, that legendary legion, and then um, and then you know, final the, the final version came out when with the adding two bears to Faramir's legion. <laughs> Good, <laughs> needed that. <laughs> you know, I, I'll say this, Tim. Just from the half troll experience that I have, I think I think you'll do well more often than not. I think there are some definite bad matchups. I think scenario is going to kill them a lot, <clears throat> depending on what what scenario you're actually dealing with. Um, just because they can't split up very much, like l- literally sending one day warning to yeah. go secure an objective is a problem. Um, so it's like you know that that's my initial thought. So you're basically always playing the same way. You're like, all right, I'm going to destroy the enemy until we get to that breaking point, and then start considering what I need to do. Um, what what's just out of curiosity? What what's your problem with sending one bearning to secure an objective? I just think that this list would exponentially start going downhill if if the numbers against them are too great. So I just feel like you want to whittle away at the the enemy numbers and make sure that they don't. Like I feel like every guy you lose, you're going to start losing guys faster, just because of like your opponent now is surrounding you and you're all defense four, so. That was usually when I see low defense, small model armies, because I play like Rangers of the North, as you're aware. And like losing one Ranger, like it, it's just like you can see it just go downhill so fast as you, at the more models you lose in comparison to your opponent. So with like Rangers of the North, for example, I try to just alpha strike one flank and use all the her combats to totally tear apart half of the opponent's army before I run out of steam. This army can't do that, but. Then again, I don't have two bears. So, I mean, that's the, the I, one caveat. I actually wonder if the tactic with this army is not to tr- not even to try and form a battle line with them, but to take the Bjornings and go total skirmish and and just 
kind of scatter them um, and put them in put them in places where there's lots of terrain and they're they're like difficult to surround and get. Let the enemy um, kind of disperse to try and get them, and then you just send the two bears into you know kind of what the center of gravity or heroes or whatever, and let the bears just go to town. Um, and you know, I mean, you obviously don't want to, unless it's an objective scenario, you don't necessarily want to scatter them too far so they can't come in to help the bears when they need to, but make the enemy just kind of disperse his army to try and run them down so that the bears can come in and just kind of slaughter pockets of them. Um, I don't know. That's, that's just kind of the thinking. I think these guys may be tough enough, particularly if they're kind of in amongst terrain where they're hard to kind of mass against, um, that, you know, because if you put one of these guys with a bow sitting on an objective, like behind a tree or in the woods or like, you know, near a building or, or something like that, you can't just send two orcs to go get him, right? You probably can't even send three orcs to go get him. If you really want to get him, you got to send like five orcs um, to make sure that you've got him. And, you know, if you're if you're sending five orcs after, you know, half a dozen of these guys who have been scattered off on objectives, that's a real dispersion of the other, of the other guys' armies. So, yeah, just something that's, to think about. I, I actually really agree with that, especially putting your bowmen specifically, like take a third of them. I would take a third of them without the, the hand and a half. And I would do that exact same thing where you put one guy on an objective and he shoots at strength four and, you know, he takes away, and, and I agree with Matt, you probably need at least four to five minimum to, to go after this guy because he's going to shoot you away as as they're coming at you, and he's just going to get that benefit. So I, I, I think, it, and it's like Matt said, if you can get a couple of them from here to there. The, I think the problem, though, Matt, is getting them onto the objectives that are from another position. It's really just your your objectives that you can protect with that shooting stance. Well, uh, okay, go ahead. Well, I mean, I think if you play it the way Matt said, and then also like one way you could play the scenario, like domination is a great example of this, where you just pick three objectives and say, I'm going to hold these three. Well, you don't try to go for all five. Maybe if you, if the scenario seems to go play out that way, but otherwise you just win the scenario, not trying to get 12 zero. Then yeah, that skirmish idea is pretty good. Cause you're not really all over the map. Um, I mean, you could also send like, you know, you could defend three of them and then say, I'm going to take, you know, two Bay Ornings and I'm going to send them off of, after the other three. Right. So that, and, and you, you send them in from kind of like different directions. Um, so that means that somebody has got to devote, you know, a half a dozen warriors or, uh, you know, a hero and a couple warriors to stop each of those pairs of Bay Ornings. And in the meantime, there are two bears and, you know, those two bears are, going to town i think it's it, it actually when you think about it as well you know you'd have two two let, let, let's say you did the three uh three objective thing you'd have two groups of seven and one group of six and then you could if you wanted to you could even leave a bear with the six and it just lets it's like going through six bay warnings keeping in mind that they have to split their army up into thirds or whatever they need to do that's going to affect them as well because oh. when you have six six bay warnings against let's say they take a war band against you i mean that's not going to go super well for them unless they have a, se- a decent hero with them they, they would i don't think they'd split up trying to chase you unless scenario dictated it i think what i would if i saw you scattering mm-hmm. i would start strong siding to one side assuming go, go that the scenario doesn't force my hand but um yeah and just wipe out mm-hmm. a flank first um i think the bears are significant enough that i would hope my, my assumption is if you're scattering, you're trying to keep your bubbles of banner range, though arguably a bear could come and reinforce fairly quickly at move eight with the creature. Yep. Um, so you might, you might get a good turn out of it before the other bear shows up. I, you know, I, I would say uh, this is worth giving a shot. I mean, overall, yep. that's what it seems to be a conclusion is that the wild card is the bears. And the reason that's a wild card for anyone who's new to this is because the bears used to just suck because they didn't have monstrous charge. Um, so now that they do, um, I mean, that one change changed, put Gulliver on the map, just that one rule, um, from going from never played to Jesus Christ, he's, he's hell. Um, so what, what that tells me though, is actually just, um, to spitball another direction is, um, are the Bay Ornings good enough considering there's no other good model 
like this, like the half trolls, are uh, are the bears at least good enough to consider just grabbing one just to get bay earnings on your front line? I, I was actually you know, a little un I, I was a little unclear if you could do that. Um, I know Grim Bayorn can be allied. Can the Bjornings be allied? Yes, they can be used in Grim Bayorn's warband. Ah, okay. Fair enough then. Yeah, it, it's it, yeah, it's okay. in the it's in the Bjorning special rules. Got it. Okay. So so basically that's one thing. And oh, and actually just to really fast touch on that, I meant to say this earlier, Tim, one thing that would absolutely wipe this army off the map is Corsairs, in my opinion. Um, you have no oh, yeah. march at crossbows or you know, cry, like, I mean, I think, I think Corsairs would suck. <laughs> like, yeah. Face. So I think that's a hard counter to this list. That being said, the Philian Rangers may be probably strong second in any other high shooting army like that. Um, that being said though, uh, going back to the other question is, um, are they worth bringing? Do you put them in the front of a, a shield wall? Do you, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of interested to play them the way I do my half trolls where I'll have like 10 half trolls backed up by Harajim spears or Mahud spears and then have banner effects and all that. Like, you know, and you just got to have these guys in the front line, just, you know, plowing through stuff. I, I'd be very curious on how that would I'm not out. sure the front line is the right place for these guys, right? Because of the defense four. Yeah. I mean, if if I were to play these guys, I think what they would do is they would follow. And if I was going to play these guys in a shield wall army, is they would follow the shield wall up. The shield wall would hit something, and then um, a bear would go around one flank, and like a half dozen of these guys would go around the other flank. Um, and uh, yeah, these are the guys that you want to try and wrap around. a little around. counterintuitive, though, because don't they get a banner from the bear? Yeah, so I, yeah I, guess, I, guess that's, I guess that's true. But I mean, I suspect if you're taking them in a shield wall army, you may well have a banner effect from someplace else. But but anyway, mm -hmm. and it, so what, I, what I'm thinking with these guys is these guys are guys that wrap around the flank and try and so instead of like having the one random spearman that wraps around and like hits the the two spearmen in the back you get one of these guys that wraps around and hits the two spearmen in the back um and that's where they really i think would shine but which i think is a great point i mean or, or, or maybe maybe you have like the bear go into the front of the shield wall and then these guys lap around the flank of the shield wall the, the enemy shield wall yeah i i think i'm repeating my talking points here because i think i did do uh talk a bit about this uh in the last defense of the north episode um but i think if you're gonna take them in a shield wall you're gonna want blinding light because otherwise they're gonna get shot to death um and you're also going to want to get your numbers relatively high like uh I'd say mid thirties to 40 models um, to be able to uh, actually support uh, your two attack fight five models. So I think, um, I think really 800 hard. points, 800 points is the absolute minimum uh, yeah. for doing this alliance. Um, and even then uh, it's a little bit wonky. I think where this could have some merit would be a thousand points where you can do something like uh, Grim Bayorn with uh, like 12, 13 Bayornings and then Galadriel with maybe some Galadrim Court Spirit supports and then uh, maybe Gondor with like Hurin and Madril and then uh, a bunch of cheaper models to be able to to pad out your numbers a bit more and get to maybe like 42 44 models yep. and i think that could be an interesting list so uh you know as you can tell from my background you should also keep in mind my wife will also soon be available to ally with the earnings and that will be immensely helpful how many points is she yeah that's going to be the question because she is beautiful and terrible as the dawn so yeah, it depends okay. how many points she's yeah. what point threshold she's at. Well, I mean the the last uh, the last female model uh, who was beautiful and terrible as the dawn was uh, drastically underpriced, and then instead of increasing their points value, uh, 
Jay just uh, made her not be able to be taken in this list. So I don't yeah. know how long mom will last. And, and, and now we just look on her in despair. Indeed. It is. Yeah. Her, man, I guess that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, All right. All right, well, so I guess we'll do another one of these if we feel the other legions. Well, actually, Rob will definitely want to talk about the uh, Dale legions and his experience with them. Yeah, but not, not you know in another episode, obviously. But yeah, since he's not here, so all right. Well, uh, thank you for tuning into this week's episode. As always, we'll be available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you want to listen to us there instead of watching? Um, please leave any lists you'd like for us to review in the future, and if you have anything you'd like for us to speak about as well, please leave that as well. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye.